Well, rising family, welcome to another edition of The Cosmic Mother. I am your host, Ahmad Brown, and this is We Meditate. Welcome to you all. And in this edition of The Cosmic Mother, episode 5, we're going to address the prevalence of women as culture creators. Women as cultural creators, and yes, women as cultural role creators. So, dealing with the book, we're dealing with The Great Cosmic Mother, Rediscovering the Religion of the Earth by Monica So and Barbara Moore. And this book review is essentially nothing more than a walkthrough of the profundity and the prevalence of the female spirit, the female presence, and the undergirding nurturing spirit of the divine feminine that holds all things together. And in this edition, we are going to honor or reflect upon how women are actually the creators of all culture, or at least the pur purveyors of all culture. So, digging right into the book, let's go for it. It says, when we say that women created most of the early human culture, we are not trying to sound radical. The evidence is there, quite tangible. When we realize how many basic life industries were the intentions or the inventions of women, we mean cooking, food processing and storage, ceramics, weaving, textiles and design, tanning and dyeing, and everything related to fire, including chemistry and metallurgy, the medicinal arts, language itself, and the first scripts and glyphs, grain domestication, animal domestication, religious imagery and ritual, domestic and sacred architecture, and the first calendars of the origins of astronomy, and so on and so on then we don't need to project our imaginations as far back as the past to confirm these inventions. They are actually still around us today and they constitute our world. Stolen and mechanized still around us today, I'm sorry, stolen and mechanized by several thousand years of patriarchal exploitation, most of these inventions have been turned into grossly alienated and profiteering mass market industries. We do have the use of our imaginations to remember that there was once a warm, personal, and loving tender art for craft that originated and was sustained by early communities of women. That's a big one. Welcome back. As we delve right into this, uh, Monica So and Barbara Ann Moore go right into the heart of modernity essentially are the heart of what a culture is these women are asserting that literally everything that has been made for use for creating culture for creating family for creating technology for creating anything essentially that is beyond uh that is beyond just the basic basic human endeavor of living <laughs> living in the woods <laughs> living as an animal living as a creature, not living upright, this energy or this presence was always initiated by women. If we honestly take a, a sober assessment of the list of things that were, that were given, women have always been the ones that were either better at it or the originators of it. And it's very simple. Cooking? Who's the better cooks? Now, again, a patriarchal age, things may have changed, but as far as the norm for cooking, who is the person that actually goes and gets food or makes food? We even see that in nature with animals. The lion kingdom, the, the lioness is usually the one that hunts the food for all, of the, for all of the lions. In similar fashion, yeah, a man may actually do the work and bring home the money that, uh, that you know, eventually will be bought for food, but... It is the woman who actually prepares the food in most cases. Food processing, storage, ceramics, weaving and textiles and design, tanning and dyeing. If we think about it, women have been the ones who've woven clothing. Women are the ones who make ceramics which actually hold all of the water. That hold and store things. That keep things in neat and packaged ways to where that they can be organized and used for better and later use. And if we honestly, honestly make a sober assessment of ourselves and honor, and honor a sober assessment of what is going on in the world. Yes, all of those things originated from women, but they have simply been refactured. I'm re, 
represented to us in a manly format meaning that like they say it's been made a textile and mechanized form meaning that men now run industry and they run the corporations and they run the warehouses <laughs> that actually make all of these things now but the originators that even invented them the originators that curated them the originators that hold all of these things together came from women and so it is the subtle the subtle acknowledgement that the essence of human endeavor the essence of human progress is really tied to the progression of women and their ideas as they introduce them into cultures and it has only been men that have stood on top of the things that they have created and made it a norm for it to be sold as opposed to a norm for it to be cherished and shared hmm going forward it says it was a society where power was linked with real love among the earliest examples of the quote unquote stone age uh, people found uh, living today such as the Kilahari Bushmen or the Mabuti Pigments of Africa the same linkage occurs female authority is validated and valued both the sexes are mothers I'm sorry, and both sexes are mothers to the young. Contrary to the blood, tooth, and claw theories of popular aggression-oriented anthropologists, evidence shows that the farther back we go into human history, the gentler our species was. This is because the early matrifocal groups were concentrated on maintaining rather than exploiting life. Now again, make a little jump here. But this particular quote is actually talking about some of the ways that we actually never really fully examine history, especially if we're brought up in the West and we learn about cultures that were before here. Me being a person who was raised in the West, when we talk about the ancient world, we pretty much only went back to like Rome and, you know, European cultures. They never once addressed Africa, never once addressed indigenous natures. And interestingly enough, they always say that these European uh, cultures they were so violent and aggressive they talk about Rome and the Colosseum where, where sport was actually to the death and people cheered at beheadings they talk about medieval times when people lived in very dark and disastrous standards and people always stole and killed one another and there was famine and all disease across the land and they say look how much we have progressed into the new modernity Look how easier we are now. Look how nice we are becoming as a people. Oh, look. Look at look at the critiques we are making on the NFL because it's such a brutal sport and they all get uh, brain damage. And now we must protect the athletes. Now look at the NBA. All of the athletes are, are getting hurt and when they're older, they can barely walk. We must rest them more because we're kinder and gentler people now. Now, those two examples are just pop cultural examples, but again, those same examples are linked into the, the very futile or the very fragile or the very small examination of history that intentionally denies or intentionally ignores when mother cultures ran the world. And this particular excerpt here in the chapter asserts that before patriarchy existed, before patriarchy took over, Cultures were not in mass warfare as such. Cultures did not want, have the desire or the ability to dominate one another in large, massive scales. When we uh, venture further back into the human endeavor or the human encounter, we will see that there was no mass genocide. We will see that there was no f feudal Japan. We will see that the warring tribes of Africa only had warring tribes that were very small and disjointed battles akin to something of a family feud and not the mass genocide that takes place now in the Congo. There was no campaign to bring back our girls because the Muslims were snatching up women because they believed that women should be dominated and controlled by men. 
we wouldn't dealing with feminism and women trying to actually transform themselves into men by taking over patriarchal structures without actually dismantling them and positioning men back into lower realms of positions none of those things were even around but the reality is the mother the nurturer the divine essence of all things has always been the force that has put the end to the war it has always been the force that has been the model of peace it has always been the essence of spirit that puts a stop to the egotistical destruction that the masculine energy has always attributed and exercised itself as I believe I've made reference to it before the legend of Kali Ma Kali Ma is the destructive aggressive force of femininity but that a destructive aggressive force of femininity only rises up when patriarchy and ego is run completely amok to where it wants to destroy everything so then here comes a woman again to chop off the heads of the ego to simply stop the war and when she arose to chop off the heads of the ego the patriarchal structures of the masculine energy could not stop her and she even to this day is undefeated so we're just digging into this a little bit more and we're digging into the very subtle nuances of culture and life and we're gonna keep hammering home this notion that we need our mothers we need our women we need the cherishment and the, the cherishing and the nourishment we need that same milk and honey that comes from their actual breast that comes and nurtures the baby this earth is nothing more than a baby or a child in the expanse of the cosmos itself and the earth is doing nothing more but birthing more experiences and the more we continue to birth experiences on the patriarchal paradigm we will do nothing more than recycle ourselves into destruction and allow the mother to cleanse up all of the earth again and then we're gonna have to start over anew hey maybe that is actually the process so maybe it's not necessarily a bad thing but do know as we're in the midst of all of these patriarchal and matriarchal strugglings and wrestlings and transformations it is us who must know that all things will come back into that nurturing balance into that nurturing place into that nurturing effervescence of life we must always remember that in our essence and in our days as we experience the trials and tribulations of everything that we endure for if any of us have to get up in the morning and go to work whatever our work may be we know that every day is not pleasant we know every day may may be filled with some form of conflict we know that every day may have some form of friction in it that will cause us a stress that will put us in a uh, dark place that will put us out of out of whack out of balance out of commission but always know that when that day is over and we return home what do we do ah <sighs> we exhale that same exhale is the mother returning or the mother rising up within us and we find that place of peace and relaxation and so we must honor that as we go forth into industry as we go forth into the matriarchal i'm sorry patriarchal structures of the world we must carry that counterbalance and allow that energy to resonate with us so that we can be the calming presence of the great mother that will ultimately transfer out into all other people because it is the only way that the mother can be honored in this structure that we're in because last time I checked nobody's brave enough to go start chopping off heads in the spirit of Kalima because no one is willing to make that sacrifice I won't lie I'm not I'm gonna stay right here where I'm at and make these videos <laughs> but again in making these videos it is about raising the awareness it is about knowing that there is a presence of peace it is about knowing that the thing that is called the Holy Spirit the wisdom aspect of Sophia 
is the thing that will always bring us peace. All we have to do is simply choose to be cognizant and mindful of her in everything that exists because she is always there. Back to the book. Industry, science, and human need were combined in women's work and the daily tasks were infused with magical meaning. Women converted plants and herbs into medicines. Some substances discovered by women are still used today for their narcotic properties. And World Health Organizations figure, um, figure to show that 95% of the world's health care today is still provided by women using many of these ancient remedies. Women design and produce containers and vessels out of materials like wood, bark, fibers, and leather. Fire was used to swallow, I'm sorry, fire was used to hollow out wood, and the technique could then be used to make canoes and boats from tree trunks. Now here's a funny, here's a funny instance. We could actually see, or it is understood, that the use of medicines were always the healing components for the body. But we could also know that in our modern times, those things have now been considered what? Witchcraft. But if anyone has actually just examined witchcraft, not even practiced it, just actually looked it up for what it is and not tried to look at it to confirm a bias, you will see that it's nothing, people are doing nothing but playing with herbs. <laughs> They're literally combining herbs and making quote unquote potions. In the same combination of herbs and potions could either heal or destroy something. And it was always that simple. Interesting, interestingly enough, this same presence is usually, is prototypically or stereotypically seen in our modern execution through the, uh, through the pharmacy. If you walk into any pharmacy across the country, 85% of the time, you're going to see women in there. Of course, men are always going to be present, but you're always going to see women in the pharmacy. Again, I'm only speaking from personal experience, but I also recall when I went to the university for my undergrad and there were the pharmacy majors, it was flooded with women in it. Of course, men were present and there were a lot of men there, but I also recall that in my freshman year, there were a lot of men in the pharmacy major but by the time graduation came it was mainly women crossing that stage with that hat in that in that degree if we go into hospitals again the whole caretaking the medicinal use the, the motherly nurturing aspect of the sick when we walk into the hospitals yeah we have doctors who essentially have taken over the higher arching or the over you know the quote unquote most important positions of medicine but for every one male doctor there is there's five to six female nurses there's five to six female nurse practitioners there's five to six female um, bed makers and room developers when you walk into the doctor's office, 90% of the time, it's a woman working at the front desk. And see, in our modern, in our modern times, some of us have developed a, a mismanaged understanding in that we were like, oh, that's sexist. Women have been relegated into the subordinate roles of, of medicine. Why is it that women are always the nurses? It has nothing to do with nothing to do with women being relegated to that it is women taking their divine place and helping people in need because they are the ones who are divinely tied to that process the mother is still here even if we don't know to see her let us continue on the original beehive shape are doomed ovens are domed ovens found all over the world could be used only by women. The oven was seen symbolically as the belly of the great goddess. Many miniature pottery molds have been found in southeastern Europe depicting Neolithic shrines. And the shrines are of on the shrines that are there are ovens, clay altars, originally covered with wooden planks, horned thrones, figurines of women worshippers, and wall images showing rain symbols and the magical grinding of grain. In these new regions, there are still women's rituals of celebration 
involving the new sacred I'm sorry, involving the sacred new year of bread dough, which is held communally in the upraised arms of the elder women of the group. The textile industries also originated women's work. Women developed court, um, cordage techniques, the weaving of bark and grass fibers into baskets and textiles. Women were the leather makers, tanning and working the skins. The skin scraper, along with the digging stick, was the woman's tool everywhere, and it is still so among Eskimo people. The cured leather was made into tents, clothes, boots, straps, and cords. They were brightly orna um, ornamented with vegetables and, veg and mineral dyes and other complex chemical processes that were invented by women. So again, just going on into the further into the book, we're now unpacking the actual nuances of the things that women have created and contributed to this world that we probably don't even realize came from them. If you're listening or if you're listening to this right now, look down and see what color shoes you got on. The fact that they have color came from a woman. Look at the colored pants or shirt that you have on. The fact that they have color came from a woman. The fact that you even have your loins covered came from a woman. The very simple fact that you are not walking around naked being abused by the elements is because women cared for us enough to cover us. We got to give it up to them. We got to give it up to them. We got to raise them up. We have to acknowledge them. This is what we need for the balance to be restored, not just in the world, but within ourselves, even me as a man. Because it is the divine feminine within me that causes me to take care of my own self. If I go full on patriarchal, I'd never clean my room. I'd never brush my teeth. I'd piss on the floor somewhere whenever I felt like it. I wouldn't cut my hair. I wouldn't do any of those things. But you know the reason why I do do those things? is because I know I want a woman. And heck, just, just to be random... <laughs> If I was a homosexual, I would do those same things because I still want the feminine presence that's inside of the other man. And so I would still need to take care of myself and make sure I look good so I can attract that same energy or a similar form of that energy, however you want to put it. You can't escape it. We can't deny it. And we simply must raise it up and raise up that awareness because she is also oh good to us. Let us go on. Pottery was a woman. All we see are the remnants of the, Maya, of the Mayan ceramic art that was done by women. It is in fact that we should all be stressed to where almost every place where pottery making on an archaic level, from Africa to Melanesia, pottery was woman made and its design is woman inspired. Throughout the area of the Amazon, pottery was a woman's task. Women were potters, as we know, in ancient Peru. Early Greek and early Egyptian pottery was also woman-made until the in introduction of the potter's wheel. Sir Lindley Scott is certain that it was only after the introduction of the potter's wheel that pottery became the drawings of the walls of Thebes, exclusively masculine, which is the stolen legacy. This suggests that all of the sub superbly beautiful patterns on pottery were conceived by women, perhaps then art itself is feminine. Now again, this particular section goes on and on and on about pot making, but if we actually pause and not be so exclusively tied to pottery itself, we're actually talking about the cup. The hard structure that holds fluid, or even grain, but essentially the hard structure that contains things that can be held and served and in, in, in shared in a way that everyone can get something out of it. Before women came up with pottery, you had to put drinks inside of woven, um, woven sacks. And those same woven sacks eventually would burst because they would spoil. And even before they would spoil, they would actually create other disease or other bacteria inside of that woven cup and people would drink them and get sick. 
life expectancy rose up when women made pottery because we could actually put things in them and then be able to have a structure strong enough to where when we emptied it out we could clean it and renew it again for later use the purpose of renewal is the woman it is integral in everything that they create they are the renewal of the earth they make the babies what can the patriarchal essence do other than create anything in essence it really doesn't create anything all it does is take what the woman has done and places it up in a new paradigm or places it up in a new light or places it up in a new structure which again is not necessarily a bad thing but the woman should always be attributed as the essence and the core of the creating presence of the man or of the penetrating presence of the man or the ability to art over art something and give it to the world that is attributed to the man the man wouldn't have anything to give to the world if the woman didn't give it to him and so this essence of about art and pottery actually is the undergirding presence of culture the ability to make the cup, the ability to serve, the ability to share, the ability to make something hard and profound and strong came from the woman. And it is that thing that supported culture. It is that thing that supported creativity. Because after the cup was made, that same cup could hold the water or the same cup could hold the grain that could be combined to make the magic, that can be combined to make the colors, that can be combined to make the woven essence of things that birth out new. Because they are the cup of life. They hold within them the cup of the womb or the cup of the water which holds the baby which creates a whole new person as every new person can is recreated brand new and no person is alike the other. The same process always happens because women are the initiators of it. So let's think about the pot, the cup, the nurturing scoop, the nurturing curve of the moon, the waters that reside within the cup that can flow out and be poured for us to drink and as we drink let those renewing waters stir up within us the refreshing essence of life and let us reign and honor life supreme because it is the mother who is raining down upon us we will only continue to rise up in a holistic way, in a balanced way, in a way that allows the space for everyone to get what they need when we honor it through the nurturing divine essence, divine presence of our mother. So yes, women are the cultural creators and us men are nothing more than the purveyors and the seed dropping wings that spread her ideas and so yes we're in patriarchy today but always remember patriarchy can only exist because the mother created us and we have simply just taken it over but even as we have taken it over there are no new ideas that we have created since we have done so So let us get back into our own creative space. Let us get back into our own creative potential. Let us get back into our own initiatory spark that initiates the vibration of change. Let us return to the spirit and presence and prevalence of the mother. And let us be refreshed and remain new through her. Let's begin to create a new culture within ourselves. And allow that new culture to be holding, containing, shaping, 
reforming and redisplaying her divine awesomeness. This is the Great Cosmic Mother. Episode 5, Women are Cultural Creators. I am your host, Ahmad Brown. This is We Meditate. Many blessings to you all.